Okay. Uh, magandang maga. Kasi tingnan na lang kung may mukha ako dyan. <laughs> so, magandang umaga sa lahat. Medyo ibang uh, klase ngayon dahil mukhang madilim yata yung ano. Nakatago ako ngayon sa ano eh, sa, sa video. So, sige lang. Anyway, makikita naman sa screen. So, okay lang yan. Ang uh, pasalamat tayo sa lugar na to, napakaganda and we spent uh, two days, so magtatatlong araw na dito and we enjoyed uh, all the time that we were together, madami tayong mga activities at uh, nakita ko talaga yung fellowship, yung pagmamahal ng bawat isa sa bawat isa and it's a good day na nandito tayo ngayon to worship the, uh, the Lord. At ang pag-aaralan natin sa araw na to is about the character of God, the attributes of God. Uh, ito isang pasimuno probably sa ating pag-aaral and itutuloy ko ito sa ating Sunday School. But for now, we'll be, I would like to introduce to you the God whom we worship and obey. The God of all compassion. The text that we read this morning is on Exodus chapter 34. But I will start to read in Exodus chapter 33. But before that, shall we bow our heads in prayer? Oh Lord and gracious Father, we praise you and thank you for this time, Lord, that we could once again worship you in spirit and in truth. That we could open your word and find the great God that we worship. Oh, we pray, Lord, that we will really appreciate the, the revelation, for we will we'll never know who you are unless you declare yourself, proclaim yourself. Let us know who you are. And this day, Lord, may we know even a little bit of you, your character and attributes, that we will be able to love you more, to worship you more, to trust and obey you more. And we also will find and acknowledge how far are we from you. But yet, Lord, we have the opportunity to, to follow you as our model, as our example. We pray, Lord, that uh, you will be great in our hearts and we always feel your presence in our midst. For we pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In Exodus chapter 33, reading from verse 17. And Yahweh said to Moses, Also I will do this thing that you have spoken, because you have found favor in my eyes, and have known you by name. And he said, Please, show me your glory. And God said, I myself will cause all my goodness to pass over before you. And I will proclaim the name of Yahweh before you. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show compassion to whom I will show compassion. But he said, you are not able to see my face because a human will not see me and live. And in chapter 34, verse 4, and Moses cut two stone tablets like the first ones, and he started early in the morning, and he went up to Mount Sinai, as Yahweh had commanded him. And he took in his hand the two stone tablets, and Yahweh descended in the cloud, and he stood with him there, and he proclaimed the name of Yahweh. And Yahweh passed over before him and he proclaimed, Yahweh, Yahweh God, who is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding with loyal love and faithfulness, keeping loyal love to the thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression. And so our text is coming from the last portion of this reading, in verse 6, in verse 7, Yahweh, Yahweh God, who is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding with loyal love and faithfulness, 
keeping loyal love to the thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions. So in the King James Version, we read this scripture, and the Lord passed by before him, and the Lord proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious. Meaning the word that we find here, the first word is merciful. But in the previous reading that I had, it was compassionate. Maawain. The, sa the same term. Pagpa pagmamakaawa or naaawa. So the word is merciful and compassionate. So what do we learn from the character of God from these passages of scripture? So, bibigay ko sa inyo yung background, bakit sinabi ito, bakit ganito ang nangyari, at bakit ganito yung tinanong ni Moses, at ganito yung sagot ng ating Panginoon. The first question is, who is this God? What kind of God do we believe? The first and the thing that we want to look is, that this God is first and foremost full of compassion. Full of compassion. The first thing is, first. A God oh, that is first. So, when you look at scripture, magkikita natin na very seldom na sinasabi ng Panginoon kung sino siya. In fact, when you read the Bible from Genesis, magkikita natin na hindi nagpapakilala ang ating Panginoon. In fact, uh, he called Abraham, we even... Abraham does not know the name of his God. He just heard his God. He just had visions of his God. He just followed his God. But he does not know the name of his God. He doesn't even have the idea of the character, of this personality of this God. And yet he followed him trustfully, faithfully. And then at one time, Jacob, when he was wrestling with God after his wrestling, he asked, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord God himself, why should you care? And the only time that we know that God mentioned his name, and his name bestows his character, is during the time when Moses saw the burning bush. And then Moses, God told Moses, okay, come back to Egypt. At, uh, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And then Moses said, sabi niya, Lord, Pero yung kausap ko, eh maniniwala ba sa akin yon? Sabi niya, Diyos ka nga, pero sinong Diyos? Anong klaseng Diyos? Sinong Diyos ang sasabihin ko sa kanya? So ang sabi ng Panginoon, sabi niya, tell him I am that I am. I am your God and I am the one that is asking him, let my people go. So, nagsimula doon na, na re-reveal ng Panginoon yung sarili niya. And this time, again, we have this instance na nagpakilala yung Diyos natin. And the instance is we find na tinanong siya ni Moses, Lord, sino ka nga ba? Can you show me your glory? So, pag sinabi niya, show me your glory, show me your character, show me who you are, show me your attributes. Tell me your name. And so, first and foremost, anong nabasa natin doon? First, that he is compassionate. That he is merciful. So, sa pag-introduce pala ng Panginoon, ng kanyang pangalan, kung sino siya, first and foremost, sabi niya, he is mercy. He is compassion. Among all other characters of God, ang inunang binigay niya, hindi pag-ibig. Hindi kung ano-ano man. Hindi holy, hindi just. Kundi sabi, compassion. Compassionate. He is a God of mercy. So bakit ganun yung sinabi ng ating Panginoon? At anong ibig sabihin nung, nung word ng mercy and compassion? Maintindihan natin ito in the background na mahal, compassionate ang Panginoon in spite of the stiff-necked people that He called for. When you read Exodus, nang tinawag ng Panginoon ang kanyang mga tao, makikita natin that they are actually parang, parang hinihila 
parang hinahatak ng Panginoon. Ano bang hayop yung ano yung mahirap pa uh, ano pasundin yung palaging ayaw yung ha? yung goat goat na may na meron na ba kayong ano dito ng goat ang hirap talaga talagang magkihilahan kayo pag ayaw niya talagang ang hirap hilahin ang liit lang pero ang hirap ganito yung mga Israelites hirap na hirap ang Panginoon because they are stiff necked people Nagtataka nga ako dito, medical yung term na ginamit ng Panginoon, stiff neck. E may kilala ba kayong pastor na stiff neck? Palaging sinasabi yan ni Pastor Tonet. Kaya pag si Pastor Tonet umikot, ganun yun. Kasi may stiff neck siya, may problem yung neck niya. Ganun yun. E ano ibig sabihin nun? Talagang hindi siya basta-basta kung saan siya nakarap, doon lang yun. Hindi mo na pwedeng i-turn. Hindi na pwedeng mag-turn. Hindi na siya pwedeng magpalit ng isip niya. Ganun yung stiff neck. And this is the people that God called. These are the character of the Israelites. And so, ano yung context nito? The context was, niligtas na sila ng Panginoon. Pinalabas na sila sa Israelite, sa, Isra- sa Egypt. Sila ay mga islabo doon. They were slaves. For 400 years, slaves sila. Nilabas sila ng Panginoon. And God called them in Mount Sinai to have a covenant. And then when the covenant was there, si ang Panginoon nasa taas ng Mount Sinai is declaring the Ten Commandments. Sabi niya, ito ang covenant natin. Ito yung susundin nyo. Agree ba kayo? So every time the Lord says the Ten Commandments, ang sabi ng mga tao, We agree, Lord. We agree that you are our God. We will follow your rules. We will follow your laws and your commandments. Sabi niya, okay, so I will covenant with you. I will have a contract, an agreement with you. You will be my people and I will be your God. And he asked Moses to go up to the mountain para isulat, pipirmahan niya yung kontrata in terms of the tablet of stones written by the fingers of God. Pero habang nandun pa si Moses sa itaas ng Mount Sinai, Habang nagpipirman pa ng kontrata, hindi pa tapos yung kontrata, anong ginawa ng mga Hudyo? Okay? They already lost faith in the God na kakukontrata lang nila. And then they lost faith, sabi nilang tagal-tagal na ni Moses, ano na nangyari sa kanya doon? Wala na kaming tiwala kay Moses. Aaron, pakita mo sa amin kung sino yung Diyos na nagkipagkontrata kami. And so, Aaron napilitan at sinabi niya, okay, kunin niyo yung mga ginto. Itipunin niyo. Tinipon nila kay Aaron. Tinapon ni Aaron. Ang naging lumabas. Sabi ni Aaron in his own word, he threw it in the fire and it became a golden cup. Talaga magician tong si Aaron na to. Tinapon niya lang paglabas ng ano, golden cup na kagad. And then, nilagay sa pedestal Tapos inikot-ikot at sinamba nila at sinabi nila, ito si Yahweh, ito yung nagligtas sa amin. That is how stiff-necked these people are na kinakausap ng Panginoon na nagpapakilala siya na He is merciful, that He is compassionate with them. Kahit ganito katigas yung mga ulo nila, God will continue to be merciful and have compassion with them. And so ito yung context. Ito na yung context wherein bumalik na si Moses at umingi siya ng patawad in behalf of his people. Sabi niya, Lord, mga tao mo to, nilabas mo to. Sabi niya, sige, pumunta na kayo sa promised land, pero hindi na ako sasama sa inyo. Kasi pag sina- sumama ako sa inyo, in the middle, mamamatay lang kayo lahat. You are so disobedient na pag nasa gitna niyo ako, mauubos lang kayo. Pero ang sabi ni Moses, sabi niya, Lord, kung hindi ka sasama sa amin, hindi kami alis sa lugar na to. Because we know that you are our only God. You are the only God that we can, that who can protect us. And so, napilitan, God relented and said, okay, I will go with you. And so this is the context na sinabi ni Moses. Sabi niya, Lord, para mas makapagkatiwalaan ka namin, sino ka? 
magpakilala ka and this is how they introduce himself. Sabi niya, I will be a God of mercy. I will be a God of compassion. It introduces already the relationship ng isang matigas suwail na tauhan ng mga tao against sa maawain na Diyos. So this is the context. And when you read the word compassion, it always betrays or it always shows, declares, describes the character of a mother. A mother who is deeply moved with compassion and sympathy. Kayong mga babae, sa awa ng Panginoon, madami sa atin dito, mother, you will, I will appreciate that. Tatay ako, I have my wife. Iba kami pag nag deal sa aming mga anak. Ang sabi nga, eh ako, nakakalimutan ko yung mga anak ko, pero yung mga nanay hindi. Lalo na pag mga baby yan. Pinapalagi iniisip yan, nakakain na ba yan, nalinisa na ba yan, ang dami niyang iniisip for all the kids. Yun yung palagi, yung lalaki wala eh, pag makaalis yun, nakalimutan niya na may anak pala siya. Ganun lang yung ano, principle. That's why when you look at God, who we think is a father, ang first description ng sarili niya, he is like a mother. He has that kind of compassion and mercy like a mother. And we will show deeper kung ano yung makikita natin about God as a mother. The best illustration in the Old Testament about what kind of mother, kung ano yung feeling ng isang mother is during the time of Solomon. So nung si Solomon ay nagpray, sabi niya, Lord, give me wisdom. And the first test na binigay sa kanya, there were two prostitutes lumapit at nagreklamo. Sabi ng isa, Lord, natulog ako, pagkagising ko, patay na yung anak ko. And then when I check, hindi ko anak ito. And I know na yung katabi ko, yung isang prostitute din, maanak siya, ito yung anak niya. Ipinalit niya yung anak niya sa anak ko. And so uh, Solomon was asked, Lord, anong uh, King Solomon, anong judgment mo dito? Sabi niya, hatiin. Kunin dito yung anak na buhay. Hatiin at ibigay sa dalawang mag-ina na nagki-claim. Ang sabi, ganito ang words na sinabi ng totoong nanay. Then the woman whose son was the living one, spoke to the king because her compassion was aroused for his son, for her son. And she said, Please, my lord, give her the living child, but certainly do not kill him. Nung nag-aaral ako ng law, the one thing that we study is the natural law. And the natural law shows yung natural characteristic ng isang mother. It will always show yung pagmamahal ng nanay. Ang sabi ng isa, sige, ya mo na, tiin na. And that betrays na hindi siya yung totoong nanay. Dahil ang nanay ay mapagmahal. The word that is described in the King James Version, yung ginamit dito na compassion, ay ang, ang word is her bowel was aroused for her son. So the word emotion, the word compassion, sa Old Testament, especially sa King James, ang ginagamit is bowel. That's why sa atin, kung, kung ano man, yung sabi nga ni, ano, yung uh, butterfly, may butterfly ka, there are tensions, there are issues, and you become emotional, there are butterflies in your gut, in your stomach. Kasi andun yung emotion. And that is how the Old Testament describes emotion. And especially compassion and mercy. At the time of Joseph, si Joseph, alam natin yung istorya ni Joseph. He was betrayed by his brothers. Sa lahat ng mga tao na alam mo, maasahan mo, yung kapatid mo, you know that your blood is thicker than water, blood, puproteksyonan ka palagi ng mga kapatid mo, especially the, the elder ones. 
Pero nung ginawa ng mga kapatid niya, binenta siya. He was left for dead. Actually, ang plano pa nila, papatay nila si Joseph. It was only Reuben na sabi niya, hindi, tapon na lang natin sa, ano yan, sa uh, well, sa bubon. And then eventually, there was a merchant na dumaan, slave, slave merchants, and then binenta nila. And so, you as Joseph, anong pag-iisipin mo? Anong, anong klaseng karakter itong mga kapatid ko? Sama-sama ng loob mo. Of all people, sila pa yung mag, uh, ano, mag-bibitray sa'yo. And yet, when we read the story of Joseph and his brothers, in chapter 42, verse 21, there was that famine in the land, and there was no more food in Canaan. And so, uh, 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 Israel asked his ch- uh, children, go to Egypt. I heard that they have food there. Go there and buy some food, because if not, we're going to die. Mamamatay tayo dito sa gutom. And so they went. Then it said, pagdating nila doon, nakita sila ni Joseph. Because Joseph is now the, the prime minister of Egypt. And he was the administrator of the food. Nakita niya agad, kapatid niya. Alam mo, pagkapatid mo, kahit malayo pa lang, alam mo na eh, kilala mo na eh. Yung isang kapatid ko nga, I have the two brothers. Yung isang kapatid ko na medyo malapit-lapit kami ng konti. Ang layo pa lang. Kala ko ako. Sabi ko, bakit andun ako? Ayun dito ako. Forma pa lang. Ang layo pa. Siguro mga 200 meters away. Very seldom kasi kami nagkikita is staying in Palau. Pero nung makita ko, sabi ko, bakit ako andun? Because the way he moves, the way he walks, talaga nga ako. This is how brothers, alam mo, May mga galaw kayo na inyo, sarili nyong galaw. And so, ganito din. Si, malayo pa lang sila, siguro baka 200-300 meters away pa lang. Alam na kaagad ni Joseph ng mga kapatid niya. Ano kayong gagawin ni Joseph? And so, we here, in niya, sabi niya, mga spy kayo, gusto nyong ano, ispiyan yung Egypt kung saan yung mahinang lugar at atakin niyo kami dahil madami kami pagkain dito. Sabi nila, Lord, magkakapatid kami. Sabi niya, labing dalawa kami. Yung isa namatay na, yung isa doon na iwan sa tatay namin. Ayaw bitawan dahil mahal na mahal. So sabi niya, hindi. Hindi kayo magkakapatid. Spy kayo. Sabi niya, iwa, may iwan yung isa dito. Kunin niyo yung bunso. And marinig nila yon. Wala silang magawa. Kasi otherwise, makukulong sila lahat, mamatay yung tatay nila dun sa gutom. They blame each other sa so nangyari. And this is how they speak in front of Joseph. And at this time, Joseph was speaking in, in Egyptian. Then it said to his brother, Surely we are guilty on account of our brother when we saw the anguish of his soul. Reading together, begin. When he pleaded for mercy to us, and we would not listen. Therefore, this trouble has come to us. Then Reuben answered them, saying, Did I not say to you, Do not sin against the boy? But you did not listen. And now, behold, his blood has been sought. Now they did not know that Joseph understood, for the interpreter was between them, and he turned away from them. So, makikita mo, how Joseph was deeply moved. Ano kayo yung iniisip ni Moses? Ano ni Joseph? Bakit siya umiyak? Ano, galit na galit siya? Gusto niya bang makaisa din? Gusto niya bang mag, mag-revenge sa kanya mga kapatid? We find actually why he was crying in Genesis chapter 45. Nung bumalik ulit yung mga kapatid niya together. Together with their uh, with his brother Benjamin. Then Joseph was not able to control himself before all who were standing by him and he cried out, umiyak siya. Make every man go out from me. So no one stood with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept loudly. Talagang umiyak, ang lakas-lakas. Sa lakas, ang buong Egypt daw. Imagine mo, ang buong Egypt ay nakakarinig. All the Egyptians out there, narinig siyang umiyak. And the household of Pharaoh heard it. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? 
So ano yung ano niya? Ano yung description? He was deeply moved because of compassion. Hindi dahil gusto niya mag-revenge, kundi naawa siya dun sa mga kapatid niya. He was given that high place. Naging maayos yung buhay niya. Nakita yung mga kapatid niya, gutom. Siguro ang papayat. Iniisip niya na baka namatay na yung tatay niya sa gutom. Because you know, seven years na, na famine ang darating. And so the first ask, question he asked, is my father still alive? That's how God for us. Ganun yung compassion ng Panginoon sa atin. Gait gaano tayo kasuwail, gait gaano tayo kasama. The first thing that is in his mind, lalo pa nang papakita sila ng pagsisisi, nagsisiyan sila, ikaw kasi. Bakit ginawa natin yun sa ating kapatid? Sabi ni Ruben, sabi niya, sinabi ko na sa inyo, ayahan niyo yung bata. Pero ang sabi dito, Joseph, in spite of what they did, Joseph still wept loudly because he has compassion for his brothers. In the time of Judges, God showed consistent and unwavering compassion to his covenant people like a mother to her crying child. Napag-aralan natin before so long time ago in Judges. In Judges chapter 2, ano makikita natin doon? In Judges chapter 2, namatay si Joshua. At nung namatay si Joshua, namatay yung lahat ng mga leaders na kasabay ni Joshua. Ano nangyari? Okay, they rebelled. They rebelled against God. They no longer followed God. Nagkanya-kanya sila, nagsarili sila. Ang sabi ng Bible, there is no more king in Israel and everyone does whatever he pleases. And there was a cycle na kinwento dun sa Judges chapter 2. Anong sabi? They will rebel against God. God will punish them by sending their neighboring enemies against them and they will be oppressed. And after being oppressed, they will be distressed and they will cry out for God. And God will be deeply moved. He will, he will find compassion to His people. And then He will send judges. And the judges will save them. And after a time, they will rebel again. And the whole cycle elopes again and again and again and again. And we read in chapter 17 up to chapter 19. Hinihiwa na nila yung mga tao doon. Nagpapatayan na sila. They themselves are killing each other. Palagi kong kinikwento sa inyo, the tribe of Benjamin was almost all killed. Yung isang tribo nila, 12 tribes. Ha, imagine mo, 11 tribes conspired to kill one of the tribes, yung Benjamin. Ganun nakasama yung nangyari sa kanila. And yet, what do we find sa storya? God continues without unwavering compassion. Diretso, walang katigil-tigil, consistent na pabalik-balik ang Panginoon na mag bigyan sila ng awa. This is how Nehemiah describes in chap Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 27 and 28. When he prayed, nung nagdasal siya para sa kanyang mga tauhan. Yung mga tao at this time was already uh, released from the exile. Bumalik na sila. At pagbalik nila, Nehemiah still nakita niya, ganun pa rin kung ano yung ugali nila ng time ng judges. Ganun pa rin yung ugali nila pagbalik nila na exile. Akala ni Nehemiah ay mag ugali na sila. Hindi. Ganun pa rin. And yet, appeal to God, Lord, alam mo na makulit to. These are stiff-necked people. But yet, sabi niya, we still appeal to your compassion. And Nehemiah said, Therefore you delivered them into the hands of their oppressors who oppressed them. But when they cried to you in the time of their distress, you heard from heaven and according to your great compassion, you gave them deliverers who delivered them from the hand of their oppressors. But as soon as they had rest, they did evil again before you. Therefore you abandoned them to the hands of their enemies. 
when they cried again to you, you heard from heaven. And many times, many times, sabi nga ng iba dito, all the time, every time they cried for help, for distress, and sa asa ng Panginoon, He will always be there to help them because of His compassion. Kaya grabe yung application sa atin eh. Kaya we believe that our God is really a great God. Kasi kahit ka ano kakulit sa atin, kahit ka, ka pa, palagi tayong naglumalayo sa ating Diyos. Palagi tayong lumalayo. Yet, God is like a mother na pagpapasensyahan palagi tayo. Every time we come back, tatanggapin pa rin tayo. Walang kasawang-sawang nanay. In the time of the captivity, God showed consistent and unwavering compassion to His covenant people like a mother to His crying child. So we talk about Nehemiah after the exile. We talk about Isaiah. Isaiah, when he was writing, he was already looking forward na yung mga Assyrians will attack and conquer yung Israel. He already foresaw that the Babylonians will conquer and at- attack and conquer Judah and bring them into captivity. Yun na yung nakikita. Nakita na ni Isaiah. And yet in spite of that, sabi niya, ano kaya? Hinayaan na kaya ng Diyos ang mga Israelites? Hinayaan na kaya ng, mga Diyo, ng Diyos ang mga Jews? Ito yung sabi niya sa Isaiah chapter 49. Kana man, can a woman forget her nursing child? Okay, reading together begin. Can a woman forget her nursing child and have no compassion on the side of her womb? Even if she forgets, I will not forget you. Behold, I have inspired you on the palms of my hands. Through your walls I have been waiting for me. So, ando na. Alam na na they will be punished. Pero dahil pinanish sila, dahil in sila, eh nakap- nakalimutan na sila ng Panginoon. Sabi na Isaiah, no? De, this is just a period of punishment. Pero mahal pa rin kayo ng Panginoon. Why? Because He is like a mother. Siguro na paparusahan kayo, be in jet, you are still His children. The word there is, is compassion. The word in Hebrew is rakum. The word of womb is rekem. And in fact, the word compassion in womb is related. That's why when the word compassion yung sinabi ni Adon sa Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 6, it actually describes the womb of a mother. That's why yung uh, relationship is between a mother and a child. Kaya ang sabi ng mga uh, ano, ng uh, ni Isaiah dito, ganito ka-close yung relationship ng Diyos sa atin para siyang nanay natin na walang kasawa-sawa. Pabalik-balik. Kahit anong gawin natin, He will always still be longing and waiting for us. And this is at the middle of the time na they were already being conquered and they were already being sent to the exile. Nakalimutan ba sila ng Diyos? Isaiah said, no. Hindi kayo nakalimutan ng Diyos. God continues to love him. In fact, Jeremiah will remind them that God so loved you that after 70 years of exile, God will bring you again here. Babalik kayo dito. Because He loved you so much. Jeremiah said, Is Ephraim not my dear son, the child in whom I delight? Indeed, as often as I have spoken against him, I certainly will still remember him. Therefore, my heart yearns for her, him. I will surely have compassion on him, declares the Lord. At the time of Jeremiah, si Jeremiah nakikita niya na. He saw already the Assyrians na kinuha niya yung, ano, yung tribe na, the northern tribe, ang mga Israelites, yung Israel. Now he is looking, and dito na yung Babylon, ni Pukadnesar is on the gates of Jerusalem. And he knows, he already proclaimed that surrender na tayo because God already decreed, decreed, uh, decreed 
that we will be losing this battle and we are going to be exiled dahil sa ating mga kasalanan. And so looking at that, sabi niya, sabi ng mga tao, sabi niya, pinabayaan na tayo ng Diyos. Kasi walang relasyon sa atin ng Diyos. Hindi na tayo tao ng Diyos. And Jeremiah reminded them, God promised Abraham. Iki e Abraham lang yun eh. God promised Isaac. Isa e Isaac lang yun eh. God promised Jacob who he changed to Israel. E Israel lang yun eh. God promised the posterity, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which includes Ephraim, anak ni Joseph. And so all the covenant people, so hindi lamang pala kay Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, andun yung promise sa kanila. That's why sabi nila, whatever promises God has made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the same promises He is now giving to us. And so kung ano man yung nangyayari sa atin, hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na hindi na tayo mahal ng Diyos. Because God will continue to have compassion to us. Kaya kung kilala natin yung Panginoon, we met, we had relationship with God sometime of our lives. And then we fall away, lumayo tayo. And then we thought na hindi na. Wala nang pakialam sa atin ng Diyos. You know, hindi totoo yun. Because if we had relationship in the past, God will continue to be like a mother waiting for us to return to Him. Ganun yung binibigay sa atin ni Jeremiah. The best demonstrations is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Talagang pag nakita mo sa Bible, sa New Testament, yung character yung unang mapapansin mo sa karakter ng ating Panginoon He is all compassion maawain kaya ang sabi nga nila you know when Jesus Christ he li- he li- uh, here on earth hindi mo napansin you, you cannot find the words in the Bible na natatawa siya nagjo-joke siya na masaya siya ano? because He is always being moved deeply Habang tumitingin siya sa mga tao. This is how the Bible describes yung relationship, yung, yung feeling, emotion ng ating Panginoon. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. During the time of his ministry, nakikita niya ang daming sumusunod sa kanya. Hindi niya tinatakwin Palaging pinipilit niya, sige, kahit, kahit pagod na pagod na siya, mula sa umaga hanggang gabi, hindi nila tinitigilan. Hanggang, kung pwede lang, hindi nila patutulugin yung Panginoon. Kailangan umalis pa yung Panginoon para magpahinga. Dahil yung mga tao ay talagang naghahanap ng kanilang masusundan. Sabi ng Panginoon, they are like sheep without a shepherd. And as he goes out, he saw a large crowd and have compassion on them and heal their sick. Ano ibig sabihin ng compassion? Ibig sabihin kung naawa ka, ay may gagawin ka. Gagawin ka. May positive action ka na gagawin sa isang tao na yung kinawaan. Walang kwento yung awa na wala ka namang magawa. Ay kawawa naman. Hindi. You have to do something para ma-relieve yung kahirapan ng isang tao that is true compassion and so what does Jesus says sabi dito he saw them he had compassion and they he heals them di natin kung ano yung healing it might be physical it might be emotional it might be spiritual but they but Jesus Christ heals them at one time nakita niya sumusunod gabi na wala silang maka- makain ang sabi ng mga disipulo Lord pauwiin mo na mga yan Pauwiin mo na. Sabi mo po, sabi ng Panginoon, pauwiin mo, igutong mga yan. Eh baka pagdating yan, di makaabot sa bahay niyan, magbagsakan, malipong yung mga yan. Mahilo yung mga yan sa daan, hindi makaabot sa daan. Bigyan mo ng pagkain. The word that uh, 
the words of Jesus, I have compassion in the crowd because they have remained with me three days already and do not have anything to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry lest they give out on the way. Pagkita natin yung pagmamahal ng ating Panginoon. That's why when we talk about the 5,000, we talk about the 4,000 that He fed. Hindi lamang papakita na magician siya o miracle worker siya. Kundi it was giving them because they need them. Kailangan nila. Kailangan nilang kumain. Kaya binigay sa kanila because what? Because God has compassion with them. And they want, God wants to relieve them. The Lord Jesus Christ wants to relieve them from their problem. Ganun ang pagmamahal ng ating Panginoon. In the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, do you know that a third of the Bible is on parables? Especially on Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So pag binasa mo yun, most of the time you will encounter parables. And a lot of the parables is about compassion. Hindi mo mapapansin yun, but when you read it, you will find that the word compassion is there. So the master of that slave, because he had compassion, released him and forgave him the loan. Naalala natin yung yung may utang na maliit, pinatawad, tapos ah, may, mala, may utang na malaki sa kanyang master, pinatawad dahil may naawa sa kanya, tapos siya hindi naawa dun sa isang tao na maliit yung utang. Kaya binawi ng Panginoon yung awa niya. Instead ng awa, naging puot. Because that is what is expected of us. Tayo na kinaawaan. We that has been given compassion should be also be compassionate. We should have already that example of the God who showed us an example. To be merciful and compassionate. Again, the famous parable of the Samaritan. But a certain Samaritan was traveling, came up to him, and when he saw him, had compassion. Naalala natin yung kwento na to. There was a Levi, there was a priest. They saw him, but they did not have compassion. Di sila naawa. Alam mo, sa dami ng tao, 6 billion na yung tao sa, ano, sa mundo mundo malapit na maging 7 billion. Sa sobrang dami, kung minsan wala na eh. Wala na yung awa. Kahit nga sa ating mga simbahan eh. Pag dumami na, wala na eh. Hindi na napapansin eh. Hindi na nagpapansinan. Wala na yung pinatawag natin compassion and mercy. When we talk about compassion, about the mother, ano yung isang word doon? Sympathy. Empathy. Kailangan nakaka-empathize tayo sa nangyayari sa ibang tao. Ano kaya kung ganun yung sitwasyon natin sa, 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 sa binugpog na yun? Nakita natin, eh kung tayo yun, o di kaya anak natin. I remember one time, nung nagtatabaho pa ako sa Panay Electric, na nakita ko, may sinasaga sa ang bata, batang maliit. So, actually, hindi siya sinaga, sina, nasagasaan uh, kasi pagbaba niya, excited na tumakbo sa bahay, sa tricycle, tumakbo, binanggaan niya yung, uh, no, yung sasakyan na, na dumadaan. Hindi siya pinangga, pero nabangga niya. Tumilapon siya, kita ko agad dugo eh. Tapos, ito naman luko-luko, hindi ko maalam kung napansin niya o talagang hit and run. Pero eventually, alam ko hit and run na kasi pinabilis na yung takbo eh, nakamotor ako. Kasi nagsusupervise ako. Hinabol ko. Hinabol ko. Tapos kala niya, baril yung daladala ko. Yung pala yung, ano, yung, ano namin, yung walkie-talkie namin. Sabi ko, andito siya, andito. Natawagan ko yung mga kasamaan ko kasi abulin namin. Sabi ko, andito na siya sa kanto. Buti tumigil sa kanto. Tapos ginaganyan ko ng, ng, ano, ng radio ko. Akala niya, baril kasi may antena pa yung 1990s na mga radio. Sabi ko, tigil. Sabi ko, kunin mo yung bata doon. Buti naman, may handa na yung bata na sa tricycle. Sabi ko, ito, isa, ikarga dito sa, ano, ito yung nakabangga. Puso sabi, bina, kinarga. Tapos, bumalik ako. Tapos, sabi nung, ano, kasama namin. Grabe ka naman, di mo nalang inayaan. Kawawa naman yung driver. Tapos, sabi ko, tinignan ko. Eh, kung anak mo yon Sabi niya, tama yung ginawa mo. Eh kung anak mo yun, hayaan mo lang ng ganun. 
Ayaan mo na lang sa kalye doon na nagdurugo yung ulo. So, ganun yung klase. Na hindi pwedeng dahil nangyari. Sabi si Brother Martin, nung kahapon, biglang ano, tumakbo yung bata, diretso lumalabas yung kotse, takbo niya ng biglang bilis. Because you want to act something na hindi dapat maksidente. Nahabol siya ni MC, papa naman. Sabi ni MC. Kasi si Mark, takbo, oy, 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 oy. Kasi mababangga yung bata eh. So, ganong klaseng ano, yung pag-iisip ba, yung automatic, you want to do something good. Yun yung tinatawag nating compassion. Yun yung tinatawag nating mercy. Yun yung tinatawag nating sympathy. Nagsisimpatay sa, eh, ano kung maganon yung mangyayari? In Luke chapter 15, verse 20, again, And he set out and came to his father. But while he was still a long way, his father saw him, and he had compassion, and ran and embraced him. In Christian. This is a favorite parable that we have. The parable of the prodigal son. So ito na. Ito na yung anak na winaldas yung pera na kanyang ama. Tapos nung maubos na nga, damug na, baboy ka, kaning baboy na yung kinakain. Sabi niya, siguro yung tatay ko may compassion pa naman sa akin. Kahit hindi na lang ako titreat na anak, okay na sa akin yun. Pero anong sabi dito? But while he was still a long way, yan yung sinasabi ko, na pag may relasyon kayo, malayo pa lang kilala mo na eh. Malayo pa lang alam mo na. Uy, si ano yun? Oh, naku, ang payat-payat. Ano nangyari sa'yo? And then ano, anong mangyayay mo kita natin? Nalikan niya, binigyan ng ano, pinakain niya, binigyan niya ng honor. This is the parables of compassion ng Panginoon. This is, he sets an example to us. Ito yung dapat na ginagawa natin sa bawat isa. At ganito dapat ang character ng bawat isa. That character of compassion. Of course, the, the, the most wonderful verse that we have, Jesus wept. Paboritong verse ni Brother Imbik. Jesus wept. Ang hirap ng word, Jesus wept. Sabi ni Brother Invit, sabi niya, oh, mag-share kayo ng Bible verse niyo. Ako, ako, ako. John 11.35, Jesus wept. Paki-explain. Paano ko explain? Papalitan ko na lang, John 3.16. <laughs> o, oh, di ba? Bakit umiyak yung Panginoon? Bakit siya umiyak? Ano ba siya yung ano? The first time you see yung, yung emotion ng Panginoong Isus. Yung pala yung emotion that we find also in the Old Testament. Nakita natin si Joseph. He's crying out loud, umiyak. And so we have find here then Jesus when he saw her weeping. Nakita niya si Ma Mary and Martha, umiyak. And the Jews who came with her weeping was deeply moved, felt compassion in spirit, and was troubled with himself. And he said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Pag may problema, yung mga kasama natin dito, kaya ba natin umiyak kasama nila? Pag may mga malalim na kasawian yung ating mga kaibigan, kaya ba natin tumahimik? At like Job, sa mga kaibigan niya, umiyak together with Job. Na kahit walang sinasabi, alam, ng ating mga kapatiran that we are sympathizing with them that we have compassion with them, that we are mercy, naawa tayo sa kanila. And that can only be shown by relieving them of the pain. And one of the relief is to sympathize, makiiyak. Kahit makita lang yung mukha mo, that's already relief enough. Alam mo sa pastor, Pastor natin dito. Alam mo, pag nakita niyo na kumpleto tayo, it's already a relief. Pag nakita mo yung mukha ng, pa, ng pastor natin, pag puro pang kulay yung nakikita niya, talagang 
Ang sama ng loob niya. And I can sympathize with him kasi hindi ako pwedeng umabsent eh. Sunday school teacher ako eh. <laughs> so ganun din, pag nakikita niyo rin ako, sabi niya, konti na estudyante mo, Brother Ben. Sabi ko, okay lang. In spirit naman, nandiyan yung mga yan. <laughs> so, kaya nire-record ko, baka mapansin, manood ng, ano, ng uh, nire-record. We sympathize. We can sympathize with each other. And this is the first and foremost character of God na kaya-kaya natin gawin to have compassion, to be merciful to each other. Can we be able to sympathize with each other? Napakasarap. Because if we do this on a regular basis, that's the character of the church. Yung simbahan natin. Kaya tayo sumasama, magkasama, dahil lahat tayo may mga problema. Nagtitipon tayo, lahat tayo. We are hurt people. May, may kasakitan tayo. Andito tayo sa simbahan. Masasaya, naka-smile tayo. Pero alam natin, may mga problema tayo. E dyan, pag nakasama tayo bawat isa, nare-relieve yun. And kung minsan talagang nasasabi mo kung anong problema mo, knowing that your brother and sister will have compassion and sympathy with you. Of all people in the world, alam mo, we are the cold people. Alam mo, mas malapit pa minsan yung relationship natin sa ating mga blood relations, mga kapatid natin. In fact, even sa nanay, tatay natin, hindi natin makausap. Pero dito sa loob ng simbahan, kaya-kaya nating mag-recite. Kaya-kaya nating umiyak sa harap, mag-testimony, mag-share sa mga prayer meeting. Sa mga babae, alam ko, ganun yung nangyayari. <laughs> oh, hindi mo kayang mag-meeting kayong magkapatid, tapos iiyak ka ng ganun, lalabas mo yung loob mo. Pero dito sa simbahan, kayang-kaya. Bakit? Because we exemplify the character of God. The first and foremost is compassion. So kung ka ang BICF man, no? Bangkok International Compassion Church. <laughs> Yun yung ano, yung lalapit yung simbahan, yung mga tao dito dahil alam nila. Sabi niya, gusto ko dito. Mga compassionate yung mga tao dito sa BICF. Okay? Yung character <laughs> ng Panginoong Isus makikita sa bawat isa dito. E eh, paano na lang kung hindi nagpapansin na? May bisita ka nga, hindi mo naman pinapansin. Compassion ba yun? Sympathy ba yun? When was the last time na nagtanong ka sa mga kasama natin, kumusta ka na? Uy, naalala ko may problema ka. Nilagay mo dun sa prayer request mo. Kumusta na yun? Nasolve na ba? Sinagot na ba ng Panginoon? Those are things na nagpapakita that we sympathize with each other. Shall we pray? Lord, gracious Father, we pray. Thank you for this time, Lord. We pray that we will find compassion in our heart as this is the first and foremost character of our God as he declared himself and revealed himself as the God of all compassion. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.